Hey Gundam Maniacs, welcome to another episode of Gundam Explained. Today we'll be looking at episode 12 of Witch for Mercury. So this is supposed to be the final episode of this season, or core, C-O-U-R, I haven't really seen that word before, except for now. Um, and it gets intense. It is what Gundam is, and it's pretty awesome. But before we get started, if you haven't, please check the links in the description for ways you can support the channel if you haven't subscribed already. And we also have a Discord, we also have our scheduled movie night that's going to be uh, going on this month. So, yeah. The last episode ended where uh, we had, I think it was the character of Sophie. I'm still trying to wrap my head around these characters, but from that Dawn of Fold in its Gundam uh, with its targets on Saleta. Um, and uh, she wanted to go, be able to go save Mjorne, but she's trying to get to the aerial because of this attack. Um, and so we're seeing the direct continuation of that because that's what we're really curious about here. This is when Gundam's getting turned up to 11. So, for the characters in this episode, it really seems like this is the first time they're experiencing, like, great risk, you know, where lives are on the line. The emergency that went over kind of lets them know, hey, there's a war going on, something's breaking out, um, and we get an awesome shot of this ship here, um, whereas, so the, the Donna Fold is trying to destroy anything at this, uh, this colony that would allow anyone to escape, you know, really... The, the point here is to take out Delling. Um, so we're seeing a lot of destruction. And it gets so heated that Vim Jaturk himself is willing to get into a mobile suit to get out and, and fight himself. But nah, that's always the thing, right? Don't get in the mobile suit. And we see Rajan from Cathedral, um, I guess who's part of the plan to try to rescue the president from his assassination. Um, so this is also a time where we're seeing multiple characters from different houses, different groups, kind of playing out their plans in all of this. You know, sick to see a launch of kind of the the mass production, if you will, mobile suits. Uh, seeing it in between the sectors of this colony, um, if that's what we call it. Just really cool art, looks really cool. It has all that the sci-fi elements uh, that I like out of Gundam. Okay, Norea Dunak, I guess that is in the other Gundam uh, kind of meeting up with them to carry out this assassination. Um, so it's kind of cool to see things move forward in that very more of a, reminiscent to the prologue where there was kind of that um, carrying out the plan that is to have something destroyed. Okay, you know, I noticed when they were talking, Sophie was talking because she's like, oh, I saw Saleta. She said um, she's in this plant. So they're referring to these colonies as plants maybe because of the, I think we learned earlier that this was some sort of, yeah, I guess a plan could be for factories uh, or an engineering or something like that. Uh, but they are calling them, with capital letters here, the Witch Hunters. Okay, this is cool to see. Uh, um, they're yelling at Olcott saying a plant garrison force is approaching. So it can, it's cool to see that, again, this is a plant. This colony is considered a plant. Um, and that they have their own garrison force. Uh, they're launching to um, to intercept this attack. And cool looking suits. Again, we're seeing that that cool like grunt sort of uh, mass production look. And you know, other things that I appreciate from this design is seeing there's a little more busy details uh, like near the shoulders and everything uh, to kind of give it that grounded look. Yep, it will intercept. And there's the other um, these other you know mass produced grunt suits. So this is right here. This is top tier Gundam. This is what I like to see when. You see the two sides of factions of whatever warring with each other with their kind of uh, military force. But then you kind of have those commander units sprinkled in, like the Gundams that are showing up here. It's actually interesting. We're getting, we cut back to Mjorne, and she is trying to get out, and she runs into her dad. And more and more, the more they show her dad and his interactions, it really does seem like he does care about Mjorne. And there's some more they talk about later on. Um... Uh, but she still just kind of has this attitude, and it could be just due to the nature of him as a father hasn't been able to be, like, open emotionally there for Mjorni in a way for her to get resolution where she has had issues understanding what's been going on in her life. But I think a lot of cool scenes come out of this in, in this episode 12 that I did not expect to happen but really strengthen uh, their relationship. And so we've got the Grassley defense system units here, um, they're, you know, entered into the fray. All units we will now enter the plant's interior again, just calling out these are called plants or the colony or whatever. Um, 
I don't know why I'm so fixated on that, but I really like to understand the terminology that's used a lot of time to describe things that we see in other media or other Gundam where things could be, you know, colony and asteroid base, etc. Okay, super reminiscent of Star Wars. It's what looks like a 3D, uh, a CGI shot going along these trenches here along the plant. Uh, you know, give them off vibes of a Star Destroyer or Death Star. And then all the lasers firing out. I mean, this is this is the stuff I like. All right, going up to Permit Score 2 to fight against them. Eh, pretty sick shot there. Uh, kind of using the chain gun against the head, blowing it up. And we're seeing them activate Antidote here. So this is what we saw earlier that kind of stopped... The aerial, an earlier episode, but that didn't really stop the aerial. And the same thing here. Um, the pilot just really increased that permit score, allow them to bypass the antidote. And kind of a sick shot of it kind of in its red, like, permit state, um, bypassing the antidote and being able to get away. Uh, just kind of cool to see the functionality um, being utilized here. <laughs> and I guess this is how crazy it's making the pilots become, because just seeing... Uh, she was just talking about her heart, want to throw up the snacks, and then we see this. It's, like, so hard for me to, like, freeze frame on any single shot to, like, describe how badass the action is. You really just have to watch it for yourself. So, interesting, I guess she was caught in the blast. Mjorny's father had, uh, I guess, tried to protect her. He got caught with some shrapnel. Kind of looks like a bad shot to get, uh, a bad spot to get shrapnel in, and... I think it's very interesting from here because Miorne is just not giving up, taking her father with her as she's trying to escape this place. And he even makes a line that alludes to her mother, so you can see there's some deeper familial um, information that we're not too uh, informed on as of yet, but this is what kind of strengthens that bond um, that I was talking about earlier, that, you know, getting into the second season, we might see more of that development between her father and her. You know, it's very interesting in Gundam where you see characters change based on information, um, and then their motivations change. That could really change relationships, too. Okay, huge fan of this, because now we're seeing, like, ground troop battles, right? Like, so this mobile suit came in, it dropped this container, the container opens, and now there's this group of troops going to head out within the plant to take out whoever they can. Oh, and this is where... We start seeing the gore uh, come into play, and it doesn't stop there. Or should I say tomato sauce? Again, cool seeing the grunt shoot suits doing their battling. We see that they're using physical, like, ammo instead of beam weaponry. And there is a, a comment made by a character saying that, you know, part of a treaty was not to use uh, physical ammunitions and space in order for their... Uh, to try to stop there being so much debris out in space, which I think is just a cool, another sci-fi element uh, where they kind of explain the world in a way. Um, and it reminds me of some parts of UC. You know, I want to say there was uh, something, I forget which seasons or shows, but I know when Double Zeta, they used the petite uh, mobile suit out in space to clean up debris. People got money for cleaning up debris. I think even in Victory Gundam, they talked about how they created these shields in front of uh, certain ships in order to vaporize the small debris that comes around. So um, just kind of cool to see that being brought up again, but being, you know, just a neat world-building element, really. And yeah, and the kids from Earth House are seeing the destruction that's being caused, and they're, and they're saying, how could they? Because it's just like... It, again, this is the episode where the stakes have been raised a bit and people are now really witnessing death. And it, this carries on throughout the rest of the episode. And so this is a very interesting occurrence here. So uh, one of the Gunnams uh, uh, from Donafold is about to blow up this other ship that has people from Earth House. She's using a signal to signal to them, hey, we're, you know, we're good guys, I guess, don't kill us. But, you know, she got caught up into something earlier that she didn't really mean to, and that had to do with Shadik wanting to get straight to that dude from Earth House that we see in one of the ships. I forget his name off the top of my head. But that she then realized what that led to, and she just, obviously, that implicates her, but she didn't mean for it to happen as as much as I think. And so here we're seeing that she signals for the, the gun not to fire on them, and then someone else sees her doing that, and, you know, we don't really know what comes up next from that. Um, could it be that they are assuming she 
um, is working with them or more of that as she's explaining herself, which we're going to have to wait until another when the next episode comes out that, you know, she's just really saying, yeah, I think I know what's going on here. I was asked by Shadiq to do something and it's kind of culminated into this. Uh, luckily, though, I was able to save ourselves. Um, so, I mean, I really think she's put in a position where it's not really her fault necessarily. And there we go, the rollout of Vim, what was that, his name, uh, Vim's ship, Vim Jetturk, uh, or ship, his, his mobile suit, uh, but this is where things get a bit crazy, because now Bob, Bob is now, um, hearing, you know, he's hearing what's going on, their ship obviously uh, got invaded, and um, I guess he heard about possibly Saleta being targeted, and He's like, okay, I'm going to go out in a mobile suit and head out there. So it's really cool. Not sure exactly entirely what Ghoul or Bob's motivations are here. But again, this just further shows his character. That he really is deep down a good person. Just caught up in the wrong situation. And I think that's what culminates here. Interesting seeing Ghoul have kind of these flashbacks. You know, right before possibly he would die. And um, thinking of Saleta. And there we go. He just drives that uh, heat blade right into his father's mobile suit without knowing. You know, this brings back, you know, a lot of, you know, in a lot of Gundam, these these things occur. The one that is, I think, was a big deal to me was in Shars Counterattack when Quest um, was so angry that people are attacking that she, like, went and just like blew up any earth federation ship and one of them her dad was on the bridge and she didn't know but she had this like this pressure this feeling afterwards because of her new type ability so it's just one of those things where we're seeing this here but you know ghoul is doing the right thing the whole time even if that means he potentially kills his father because if you think about it his father is the one that's not doing the right thing at all because this was part of his plan he wants he wants to kill President Delling um, by doing all these bad things. It's like, by doing all these bad things, it's like creating in the universe an opening for his son to do the right things. Um, it's very interesting. Okay, so, so let us about to get to the aerial, and those troops came in because they're trying to secure the aerial, and... Who shows up? But it's uh, Saleta's mom. She had shot one of the troops, and Saleta did not like that. That bothered her a, a lot because this is really the first time that Saleta is seeing this stuff and experiencing the horrors of the war and the violence. Because so far, everything's been about having a duel or being in a duel. And even though Saleta is not happy about this, her mom talks her into understanding, which I don't think is necessarily wrong, really. Um, but it's like sometimes you have to do this. Sometimes this is the right thing to do. Again, that, you know, uh, that move forward two steps, that whole thing that they're talking about. And uh, it, it kind of changes then Salita's tone when it comes to violence and having to kill. She knows that she'll be able to save people. Okay, so this is where then the aerial, I mean, yeah, Saleta changed her mind. Her mom talked her into it. She's now going to go on her murderous rampage. And uh, I guess Sophie has arrived finally to the hangar uh, with her Gundam to see if she can find and take out the aerial of Saleta. All right, and so this is where we get that epic Gundam battle that we have been waiting for, although we've gotten little hints of it every now and then, some cool mobile suit fights. But, yeah, this is the, what, final form of uh, the aerial it's got that gpo one fb look to it it's uh got the binders on the back that are not necessarily on the shoulders but on the back they have different uh formations i actually took some screenshots to put on uh i put on my twitter kind of showing the different sort of positioning that these binders can take depending on what it's doing whether it's in flight or kind of hovering in place and then she even forms this giant gun uh, reminiscent of the Mega Bazooka Launcher, I believe it's called. There's different forms of that from uh, UC Gundam. Uh, but there's always that um, that time where a Gundam just pulls out its badass weapon to do uh, what it needs to. And check this out. Just mass production units rolling out, um, uh, going to battle. Love this stuff. Okay, and so most of the, 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 the terrorists, they called them, that were, you know, from... That, yeah, the Earthian Gundams that were out there battling have retreated just because of how crazy, insane the aerial is. Um, and then that, that news is getting around. Um, Elon, uh, Shadik, uh, really curious 
what what their play is in this. Obviously, that's going to be more about in season two since we've been introduced to these characters. Um, but, uh, yeah, I find it fascinating that we've got some information in these characters, but not really anything to resolve that this, like, first season. All right, and this is where it gets crazy because if you stay after the credits... Um, Saleto shows up to save Mjorne. A, a soldier was just about to shoot Mjorne because President Delling was right there. They could have just taken him out. But, uh, Saleto high-fives a soldier, creates tomato sauce. But it didn't look like Mjorne was happy about that. And I think, I think what they're kind of doing right now is maybe setting our expectations at a certain level emotionally because we're seeing Mjorne's reaction to what Saleta did, calling her a murderer. and But the look on Saleta's face, she's so happy. Um, I guess get, This kind of goes into how Saleta was raised, how her mom tells her, you know, how she's confident when her mom tells her what's right or what's wrong. and But at the same time, Mjorne's in shock. Like, her father could be dead if not dead already. Um, she was about to get shot because this place is under attack. All these characters are going through this kind of life and death scenario that hasn't really been a part of of these characters past in The Witch from Mercury so far. Um, so that's like a very crazy way to end this. All right, and just for some closing thoughts, you know, it's going to be, I guess it's going to be a while before we get another episode, right? Uh, I think April. Well, I could be wrong, but um, just... Just after we finally got Saleta Mjorne being cute again in the last episode, kind of making up for not understanding each other, you know, Saleta's doing whatever she can to be there for her, um, being able that Mjorne can depend on her, and Saleta proved that in a very gruesome way, um, and I, I, you know, part of it is kind of sad the way it ends because of how Mjorne is, she's not happy, as like Saleta is happy because of everything that's going on. So it's kind of crazy for it to have this sort of dark ending before we get any more. Guys, let me know what you think um, of this episode. This was this is really all out Gundam. We got awesome battles. We got some high stakes. Um, we got some gruesome death scenes um, and really kind of setting the stage for what could come uh, with this next season. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that school stuff is going to be dropped altogether, really, and it's going to be where there's going to be reinforced military or forces on both sides, um, but I think it's more than just both sides. I think there's within the Spacian and Earthian, there's also these little factions, so I wonder how much that's going to be explored. Anyway, so again, this is really my reaction, just watching it and then going through it again. I could have missed stuff. Is there any interesting things I missed that you can comment uh, down below about? I might bring it up on the podcast or in a tweet or something like that. But uh, anyway, yeah, let me know what you think, and uh, thanks for watching. We'll talk later.